Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Z-E-R-C, voice of the people. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kennedy. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Z Garcia. <laughs> yeah! All right, folks. That's right. <laughs> now, listen, I'm actually excited about this. Um, so, Hilmar, the Viking Drupal, <laughs> who is one of our listeners, me and Z have both met him and gamed with him in Iceland. And he's actually the main force behind rebuilding our website. It's going to take a while, but. Since he has access to the website, yesterday we talked about Twilight Imperium 4 mm-hmm. and how many people voted for it. So he got me that information. 76 nice. people voted for it. We actually had um, almost 1,000 people vote on the top 100. There's 21,000 submissions total. But um, 76 people voted for the game, and the vast majority of those were 1 to 5. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Other than that. Top of their lists, right? Yes. Right. And there's a lot more stats, but I'm going to be saving most of those for my Sunday stat going over video that we're putting up Sunday evening. So come back for that. Mm-hmm. Top 40, baby. We are. Yeah. We got some good games coming. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's make it happen. Okay, so my number 40 has been on the list for three years. Um, This is a game I did not expect to like, but it's space, so Roy might like it. And even though it's a straight-up Euro game, (laughs) not even close. And that's Pulsar 2849. Uh, I do like it. Oh, you played it? Yeah, it's it's enjoyable. I played it. Is it because it's space, Roy? I have really no idea. Feel- I really Sorry, enjoyed Roy, building Roy. Dyson Spheres and gaining points off of them every round. If Roy likes this game, then unequivocally, he is about the space first and I- everything else. <laughs> second. Yes, I don't think coming. that was in discussion. I thought we already knew that. Is yeah, Tom taking calls during his pick? Take the calls during Mike's pick, well, not during, our, not during the, yours. I have to let the guy in to fix the leak and in the roof. You want to know who made that leak in your roof? Roy Canada up there playing <laughs> Pulsar 2849. That's what it is. <laughs> anyway, this is definitely a point salad style game with technologies and stuff, a dice drafting, and it just works for me like a charm. Love this game. Pulsar 2849. Hmm. Let's go from space to deep in the to ocean. Space. This is an, un- <laughs> an underwater themed game that is Actually, a Dice Tower Essentials game that I love, it is Aquatica. Aquatica is an awesome game where you're playing cards out of your hand to recruit like these different locations and you're getting more characters and building them into your hand as well. And you're trying to figure out how to get all of these cards in the right positions and push them up along a grid to gain victory points as you score them. And there's just a lot of stuff going on in this game. There's lots of different ways to do it. And it's got these cute little plastic mana rays that you're racing the other players to try to like score on the board, but you're also flipping them over for actions. There's lots of stuff going on. I think this game is going to be a hit for a lot of people. And if you haven't checked out Aquatica, you definitely should. My number 40. And Tom already talked about it. It's a crossover, right? That is a crossover. I think, did it? Is it just the two of us? I think it might be more of a crossover, but we'll have to see. So I can far. always tell when people are super oh, quiet when I talk about something. All right. <laughs> Hey, let's go from deep down in the ocean, Roy. Let's swim. Let's emerge triumphant and go into the clouds. My number 40 is Cloud Spire, a big kind of MOBA smick with uh, with tower defense. It's only in the man you let. No, no, it's all floating in the sky. I taught you this game with Roy. You did not feel the immersive theme of being a cloud city, of being a cloud, an island in the clouds. Is that, that what is it is? Cloud really? Spire. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 cloud cities. Yeah. You didn't feel that? I did not. Deeply <laughs> entrenched within the mechanics of the all. game. 
let's not get caught up with the theme, shall we? It's actually a, a nice theme, and it's a beautiful production, as all chip theory games are, uh, where basically you've got kind of these neoprene uh, mats that represent these cloud cities, and you are sending these poker-chipped units that you have towards another player's fortress. And on the way, you're building spires that are going to be in tower defense style, attacking the units as they come marching towards you. Now, it's a game that has a lot of rules, and each faction plays fundamentally differently from the other. There's some heavy asymmetric uh, uh, action going on as well, which can make the game difficult to learn and teach. But it's one that, again, like, like the other chip theory game that's on my list, uh, like Too Many Bones, it's a game that if you're willing to put in the time, if you're willing to put in the effort to learn what your units do, it can really provide a very, very satisfying experience with a tremendous amount of replayability. I feel like I've really only chipped the surface a little bit of what Cloudspire has to offer. <laughs> I like it as a multiplayer game, like uh, when, when I taught Tom and, and Roy. I love it as a solo game as well. It's, uh, it's a really good game. I'm really excited about the new factions that are going to be coming hopefully soon. Uh, so Cloud Spire is my number 40, and it might rise even higher into the clouds the more I play. Oh, it's so terrible. You were oh, doing okay. A lot of bad <laughs> jokes. I, I, I really want to play joke. this one more. I played oh, it with, with you guys. I really enjoyed it. And one of the things that's interesting about this game is the fact that you like recruit units and they kind of just move across the board themselves. You have heroes that you can run around and do stuff, but it's more right. like you recruit them and just kind of see how they're going to do and how they're going to do against the waves of stuff, which makes it feel like that whole tower defense game, which I think is great. I need to play this more, Mike. Let us play. Let's make it happen, Roy. Okay. Z, you I can't play. I keep going with this garbage pun, I guess. Anyway, let's go from the clouds. <laughs> as we're soaring above... The cities, let's go find us a forgotten jungle and search for the lost city of El Dorado. We're going on a grand quest for El Dorado. Wow, this high. Yes. Well, not as high as the clouds, but yeah. <laughs> uh, number 40, quest for El Dorado. I think it was on your list, Mike, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I forget if it was somewhere else yet, but uh, it will not be know. on mine, and I probably will not be on the people's list. But anyway, I really like it. It's a I do like the combination of deck building and and racing. I I, I just like racing games, and deck building I think is fine. I'm not as enamored the mechanism as many people are, but you fold that into a racing game, and especially one that uses that uh, that deck building aspect so smoothly. And I am a fan of that combination. It's a very modular game, very interesting game. Uh, there's been a solid amount of extra content out there for this, an expansion to the original game, a follow-up, standalone that you could mix in, which is nice to see that support, because this is an, an, an award-winning game. Uh, and so... Um, it was 82 yeah. for the people, by the way. Oh, it was oh, on the okay. people's list. Okay. So yeah, I really enjoy this one. Is I always have a good time with it. Pretty breezy, but some nice tension towards the end. Quest for Eldorado, my number forty. Daniel is correcting us by saying that uh, Vladimir's last name is pronounced Suki. Yes, yeah, the see, CH I've is heard the same we were... as Cavato. So okay, I appreciate that. I appreciate when people pay to tell me that I pronounce things incorrectly, although it makes it tempting to do it more often. Anyhow. The people's choice is Tio Tahuacan. Um, <laughs> second year on the list. Well, actually, I'm not doing that on purpose. I can never remember how to pronounce this game. Uh, this is higher ranked than Zulkin. I did not expect it to pass Zulkin, actually. Last year, Zulkin was 61, and this one was 85. Now Zulkin's 51, and this one is 40. Uh, they're okay. the only two T games on the list of that series, and I suspect that may be how it turns out. We'll see if Tech Kenu passes up on that. But yeah, that's People's Choice number 40, the game I said earlier. <laughs> okay, this top 10 section is going to make me sound a little cult of the newish, and I don't care. I love it. Um, my number 39. I love it. Is a game I really like. I'd like to be clear how much I enjoy this game in okay. case there were people thinking otherwise. And that's Dwellings of Elder Vale. Um, it's, he, it's in your 30s? <laughs> oh. 
They didn't even make your top 100 slackers. So, anyhow. I don't like it. I think it's hot garbage. <laughs> I really like Lion. this game. I don't. I really like the game. I'm kidding. I like everything about it. I like the monsters most. That's my favorite part. I like whenever there's a giant monster you can go out and kill, like Lords of Hellas has the same thing, right? I enjoy this, but it's also a pretty solid Euro game, essentially. Uh, the combat system, when I first heard about it, I thought I would hate it, but it works really well. Um, I like the, the variance between the different factions. I like the art. It's just a lot of fun. Dwellings of Elder Vale in my top 40 at number 39. Oh, it's going to be high on some. Oh, yes. And someone's, I knew this would happen. Someone said, how could this happen with it being number nine on my 2020 list? Because I said, even when we made that list, I said that it could go higher, and it has. Wait, are you telling me that from now on, every time I do any top 10, any review, I have to make sure I mention? By the way, folks, these are just my thoughts right now. It might go higher. It might go lower. Yeah, if you don't (laughs) clarify that, (laughs) you also have to clarify that the review is, in your opinion, lest someone think it fact. Mm Mm-hmm. And punish me thusly. (laughs) My number 39 is also a worker placement game, which is a crossover with a game Z had mentioned quite a bit earlier. And this is Fallout Shelter. I really enjoy Fallout Shelter a lot. I, this game is, when when I saw it, I was like, there's no way this is going to work. And we played it and it was just extremely enjoyable. I mean, it emulates, it gives you that Fallout feel, but it's extremely simple worker placement. But you also have these different like monsters and minions coming in that you're having to take out along the game. And it's just cool because you're building up your different areas. People can come to your areas. You're going to get resources for it. I love when that happens in worker placement game when you get to build places. It happened way back in the day with Lords of Waterdeep. This brings a little bit of that flair back. And then there's all these different things you're trying to do to figure out how to build more things, collecting weapons and items that you can exhaust to be able to use their abilities. I really enjoy Fallout Shelter. And if you haven't tried this game, I don't really see a whole lot of people talking about it. I find it extremely enjoyable. That um, is don't weird. just pass this one by. Yeah. This one seems to have not gotten any people talking about it. I think people just see it it and assume that it's bad, but I mean, we were also shocked when we played it. Like, we played it and it's just like, holy smokes, this is an amazing, like, light worker placement game with with fun combat mechanics. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess this is a a victim of a uh, messed with release schedule because of COVID. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It got announced, it got shown, I mean, we played it, Mm-hmm. And then it wasn't released for months. Right. By the time yeah. it did show out, it did show up. Nobody was talking about that game anymore. Right. So people probably assumed in that window it came out and no one liked it. I don't know, but it's unfortunate, man. This was just a I, casualty of that. I've played this game with you guys and had a blast. I've played it with my kids and had a ton of fun. And then I've also played it with my parents and had a lot of fun. Mm. And all along the way, everybody enjoyed the game. So I think that just speaks volumes to how how versatile this game is and how fun it is. Let's keep in mind, too, that all of us like that theme, right? But we all went into the game probably not expecting a whole lot. I've mentioned this before. But I remember us playing that game the first time, and we all kind of were locking eyes with each other every so often going, is this good as we think it is? So I, I, I do think that it has this idea that, oh, it's an IP-based game. It's based off of a, of a mobile app. That may have been a problem, too. Try it. It's really good. So yeah. build up your uh, happiness right. and try it out. By the way, That's Alexander it. says he likes what we're doing, and greetings from Finland. Woo! Finland. Thanks, Alexander. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. My number 39 is part of a trilogy known as the West Kingdom Trilogy. This is Paladins of the West Kingdom. And uh, in my estimation, this is the heaviest of the three West Kingdom games. And it's, I believe, the heaviest of any of the designers' games. Shem Phillips, he co-designed this with, uh, uh, I can't remember, Sam McDonald. So uh, Paladins of the West Kingdom is a really, really crunchy Euro game where you are placing workers of different types and you have kind of interlocking tracks that you're trying to uh, build up. One makes you stronger and another one and you're trying to combo uh, and and gain points. It's kind of a point salad game, quite honestly. And uh, it is a very satisfying puzzle every time. A lot to kind of keep track of, and so it can be a little bit tough to learn, but again, another 
I've said this a few times now, if you're willing to invest the time into learning how these systems interlock with each other, it provides a really satisfying experience. Um, and uh, it, it's just one that from the first time I played it, it, it stuck with me and I continue to enjoy Paladins of the West Kingdom. All right. My number 39 is a uh, one of my favorite social deduction games, and this is Deception Murder in Hong Kong, Ooh. a game in which all the players uh, among them is a uh, the killer, the, the murderer. And one player at the table is giving clues as, in a limited fashion as to what the items are that were uh, used to commit this heinous uh, crime, with all the players then immediately starting to fling accusations as to what's sitting in front of you on the table. Oh, he's holding a bottle over there, and they say that the death was, you know, uh, bloody. So a you know, bottle to the head, that'll do it. That person will go, no, come on, look at what you're holding. You, you a piano wire? That's way bloodier. And and so it, it you know it evolves from there. It's a game in which that interaction, that sort of you know the 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 energy comes to a to a bubbling point very quickly, and I like that about this one. It's not a slow burn game. <laughs> it is not a game in which you are doing the sideways glances and waiting for somebody to finally go. All right, fine, let's talk about you. No, 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 no. That's that's happening minute one. <laughs> that's what I like about it. You know, not every social deduction game needs to be like that, but I'm glad this one is. And it, it just it's always a good time. Mm -hmm. So this uh deception murder in Hong Kong, my thirty nine, always have a good time with it. Number thirty nine, a lot of people should be excited. This is on the third list, excited that there's a legacy version of this game coming out this year, and that's Sagrada. Ooh. This one's very popular, and so I said earlier that I like role player better than Sagrada, but the people like Sagrada better. It's higher on their list. And it is a more accessible game, and it's there's not a lot of games with the theme of stained glass windows. Like, there's two. You know, the other one being the better and superior uh, Azul, as we have agreed on by majority. Um, <laughs> Z, you and I both said it. We beat Mike. That's, that's simple. Oh, my. That seems underhanded. <laughs> I don't so, play Azul. My vote counts for two. By Anyhow. Two. That's preposterous. <laughs> that is preposterous. <laughs> anyway, Sagrada, I know a lot of people like it. That is number 39 for the people. All right, number 38 is newer to the list for me, which is weird because I feel like it must have been on my list before. I don't know how it missed last year, but who knows. And that is Thunderstone Quest. Now, I'm a huge fan of Thunderstone in the past. That's, I've been talking about this one for years. And Thunderstone Quest, while it suffers from my dislike of the box is so big that you know, it requires a, a forklift to bring it to the game meetup, and they've released so many expansions I can't keep track. Fortunately, since I like playing it in epic style, I don't have to carry all that stuff around. It's still My box is still fairly compact and... It much more feels like a dungeon crawl at this point. It's a, it, you know, when it first came out, we said, ah, it's like Dominion again. It's nothing like Dominion at this point. And I really like what they've done to the system. So my number, oh, where are we at? I don't remember. I lost my track of numbers already. 38. 38. <laughs> Thunderstone <laughs> Quest. <laughs> That's not looking good for me, guys, is it? <laughs> no, it's fine. We're almost done with the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. Not even close. <laughs> 38 for me. I guess is technically a crossover with everybody, sort of, maybe, depending on the version. Um, I really enjoy Century Gullum Edition. Um, I really enjoy the way that you switch out the cards and you're upgrading these different crystals. Um, I also enjoy Spice Road, but I'm putting the Gullum Edition on here, and I'm also putting just the original um, for mine as far as I enjoyed. I just love the, the pureness of how quick this game plays. The turns are just snappy, 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 and it's just all about trying to fulfill those different contracts with the Gullums and being able to collect them to gain points, and you're racing to get the cards out there, and, and it's just really enjoyable. I've played this game over and over and over again. I really enjoy Century Crystal Golem. And I, I think, don't think this was on Z's list. I don't Z hasn't had it yet, but everybody else has. We, we could have had a five-way no. five crossover, and you ruined it. 
Yeah, well, it. you know, they they got it. They 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 did it to themselves by creating one edition and then a different edition, but it's actually that, the same that's, edition. That has nothing to do with it. This yeah. could be us. It does. But yes, you're playing around, Z. This game's amazing. Plus, I'm still waiting on Century Post Apocalyptic Edition. There Ooh. we go. <laughs> Come on, baby. That then I'll put it on the don't, list. Don't don't tempt them. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, a few years ago, a number of years ago, I played a game called Above and Below, and I thought, now this is a cool game. I really enjoyed it. Then I played my number 38, Near and Far. This game is like, if you've played Above and Below, it's a storytelling type of a game where it's almost a choose-your-own-adventure type of a thing. It was a really neat little Euro game. Near and Far took that concept and put it into a much larger scope. This is really... You could play it as a campaign game, and I've played it that way. You can also play it as kind of one-offs, but Near and Far is just, to me, a lovely package, a complete package. The art is gorgeous because it's done by the designer, Ryan Lockett. He does the art, he does the design, he does the development. Uh, he probably constructs the games in his home as well. Uh, he's a very talented man. But Near probably and Far does. It, probably does, right? <laughs> Near and Far is a really nice narrative-driven game uh, with some nice, solid Euro underpinnings as well. But to me, the, the real appeal of Near and Far is this world that it creates. I think that Ryan Lockett is a wonderful world builder. There's kind of a shared world amongst all of his games. But every game kind of takes you a little bit deeper into that world. And, and there's a new one coming out that will we'll do that even more. But Near and Far is just a lovely, lovely experience. That word is the one that just keeps coming back to mind. I don't know. I just, I find it a lovely game. So there you have it. My number 38, Near and Far. My number 38 is a re reprint, slight reworking of an older game that's got quite a few years on it now from Bruno Catala and Bruno Fiduti working together. The original game was called Boomtown, the one I used to have anyway. But the reworked edition now uh, is called Gold River. And that's my that's my uh, 38. Generally the same game. Uh, they've changed a few of the action cards. They've changed uh, player count. And there's now an official two-player variant in there. They've changed a few things. But the game is this very straightforward bidding game for the most part. You are going to be going around the table bidding on a selection of mines gold mines or maybe maybe action cards as well as you as that ends and somebody finally wins you are going to draft these cards um and then you roll dice and those dice are going to generate gold you might discover gold in these mines wrapped around all of that you've got all these action cards like i said where you get to mess with people you get to uh help yourself out oh, no matter where i end up in the in the bidding i draft second boom it's stuff like that. And I really enjoy it. I think it's just a fun game. I like both aspects of it. It comes with, you know, the bidding and the tension there. But then also just sort of collecting things, rolling dice, and being like, jackpot, I hit. I found gold. That's just fun. I uh, This production quality is okay, but the artwork is lovely on these cards. And I just really enjoy it. It revitalized the game for me. I think the... Uh, the years of experience that both of these designers now have poured back into this uh, lovely little game, they, they, it shows. It shows, and I, I really enjoy it. So Gold River, 38 for me. Well, this is actually interesting because this is the first year this has been on your list. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but Boomtown was only on your list in 2014, and it was number 100. Yeah, because it's garbage. So this... <laughs> no, but I'm saying so this new edition just kind of brought it back in your memory, or it did. It did both. It is a better game. It's not the exact same game. Like I said, they changed. Uh, like some of the old action cards are gone. Some new action cards are in. Uh, rules are a little bit tightened up. Uh, the dice, for example, are different now. It used to be you would roll two six-sided dice. Now they give you those dice sticks. They only have four faces. It's just so the the number spread is smaller. You can roll at most an eight. Um, yeah, they just tweaked a few things, and I really liked it. I, I like it a lot more. Cool. I'm gonna have to try this one out with the new version because I always like Boomtown. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds fun. It does sound. All fun. right, number 38 for the people almost made the list last year. It was 110, 
Um, and so it's zoomed up, and I imagine it will be here for a while. I know at least one of you has had it on your list already, and that is Horrified. Oh, two of you. Ah. This may be, this may be the five-way. No, it's not on my list. I like Horrified a lot. I only have so much um, top 100. You ruined a good thing. You ruined a good thing, Tom. Every day. You're one to speak. It's not on my list either. Shh. Really? Outrageous. I thought both you guys love this game. No, we do. I like this game a lot. The list of games that we can put on this gets smaller every year. Technically, <laughs> anyway. it does not. It does, technically. <laughs> Because, <laughs> okay, look, uh, proportional wise, there we go. Okay, I'll give you that. A big proportion. I want some cake. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> I don't know why where cake came from. Listen, horrified. Universal Studio Monster is very popular anyway, and this mass market didn't hurt it for sure. Prosper Hall's on fire. I will be curious to see if any of their other games. That are cooperative, like I don't think the Back to the Future one is as popular, but we'll see if any of that stuff makes the list next year. But horrified, people's number thirty-eight. Yes. My number thirty-seven is new to the list. It's never been on the list before, actually, and yet I've played it before almost every other game on this list. This game is in the forefront because for some reason I got back into playing it this year. I even taught the game to Roy. And You've that... been hanging out with Roy too much. Nostalgia's creeping up on you. He was happy because he destroyed me in this game. No, I don't care about that, Roy. You were new to it. I don't... That's not the thing, but I've been playing it again, and that's Marvel Overpower, or just Overpower. I don't know why. I know a lot of people say this game has its pro. I mean, it does have its problems, it's, but it's a collectible card game that when it came out in 95 was very different than Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. Very different. Uh, it has a venture bidding gambling system that still is very unique. I haven't seen it used in any other game, and I played it. I I, I don't know what got... Uh, you know what it was? It was, the, it was the quarantine. I was sitting there sorting out overpower cards. And yeah, quarantine gave you, gave you some, cra some crazy fever because... Overpowered 37 is I, I feel the way Mike's face looks right now. I'm just saying, what are I you doing? I really like this game. I'm a big fan of Marvel anyway. It was um, going so well till now, and then you have to invalidate this whole process. I don't care. I think it's a fantastic game, and I'm just glad that it's it's being done. So Overpower, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it again. I'm back in it. I'm in a Facebook group that talks about it. I'm just there. It definitely has some very interesting <laughs> mechanics. Like my entire childhood, I wanted to play this game and then I played it with Tom and it was such a let. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I had a lot of fun playing it and I feel like it'd be the whole bidding thing. is just something that you have to wrap your head around. You know, how hard do you go to, to, to mess your opponent up? Um, definitely an enjoyable game. I was feeling good till Roy started talking about him wanting to play it as a child. Yeah, baby. Uh, all right. Uh, I never seven. was able to play it. It was, it was, it was on my grail. You're list. a child, bro, because he's old. <laughs> Get it? Tom Vassell. Oh, yeah. I was cat. definitely super young when this was out. <laughs> Oof, okay. Tom, I'm sorry, man. I take back at what I said. I feel it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> my 37 is a game that is a crossover with Mr. Mike Delisio. And this is my favorite of the Tiny Epic series. This is Tiny Epic Quest. I really Boom. enjoy this game, despite what Tom says. The movement is interesting, trying to figure out I like the game around. when you won't shut up. I like the game. Why is this the thing? You said you don't like the movement. The movement is an interesting part of the game. Um, I like this even at higher player counts as well. Um, but I, I, this has like this like pseudo Zelda theme. And the first time I saw those little item meeples, I was flipping out about how amazing they looked as you're collecting different items and plugging them into your meeples to give them extra powers to be able to go on these different adventures to try to fulfill things to get um, different points for your characters. I just really enjoy the way this game plays and the whole aesthetic and theme of the game makes it even more interesting. And that is Tiny Epic Quest. Yo. I remember Roy taught me this. Oh, yes, and Z hates it. <laughs> <laughs> well, not so much the game. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> I like this game to clarify. I think it's the second best of the series. Goodness. Probably think it's the second best of the series also. <laughs> oh, wow. 
It's no, I don't. I, I barely remember it. I just remember mm. feeling kind of underwhelmed. It was like, oh, okay. Press your luck. Press your luck. That's right. Good game. All right. My number 37 is a worker placement game, and boy, do I love me some worker placement games. And I think it has a wonderful theme as well. My number 37 is Viticulture, where you are making wine, essentially. And I think that the theme, uh, not only is it unique, but I think it helps in this game because it does feel like it makes uh, some thematic sense. You're planting fields and you're choosing particular grapes that are going to turn into, you know, red or white wine, and maybe you'll mix them together to make a rosé or a sparkling wine. And it's just a really, really smooth, elegant worker placement game. Now, if you want a more robust experience, you can add in the Tuscany expansion and it really kind of ramps it up into more than uh, the base game, which is a just slightly above entry level worker placement game. But I'm happy with just the, the, the base game. Tuscany is wonderful. But if you like this theme, if you like worker placement games and you haven't played Viticulture yet, you really should do yourself a favor because I think this is going to be considered a classic, and I think it's that for a reason. Viticulture is a really rock solid. So you're saying, Mike, game. that you would put this in the same position even without the expansion? Oh, uh, yes, I would. I oh, think. Wow, I disagree on that, but wow. I think if now what I would say is I would say the essential edition. I would do that because it does include some. Oh, it, I it has the mamas. That, that, that yeah. mix is there now. That's it's the so essential confusing. edition. Yeah, the the essential edition of Viticulture comes with the mamas and papas and and the grande worker, and so it does incorporate some. Uh, but but yeah, I I like Viticulture just as it is. It's great with Tuscany, but I don't think it needs it quite as much as I think you do. So that's my thirty-seven Viticulture. All right, my thirty-seven uh, has been on this list for a long time for me. It's Balder Dash. It's a goofy party game. Bring it back, Balder Dash. Balder Dash, baby. Is Balder Dash out of print? I wonder. Uh, it's usually sold on Amazon for like fifteen bucks. It's a really yeah, so cheap it's probably, version. Yeah, it's of probably the game. in print then. Um, this is a party game. It's the dictionary game, and but it's also you you'll have words and everybody makes up a definition or a date that something happened. I don't even know which categories are in there now. Famous people, and you you write down why, why they're famous. It is out of print, Z. Yeah. Eighty-nine dollars on Amazon right now. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Do not buy this game for eighty-nine dollars. Go to the store and find it. <laughs> yeah, come on. I, I I just this is a game that devolves into laughter very easily, and uh, you often will just not finish the game because everybody just sort of gives up on trying to win, and just switches to trying to make everybody just laugh, forget winning. And that's perfectly fine. This is just for laughs and fun. And uh, from that point of view, it's fantastic. Balderdash, my 37. All right. For th the people's choice for 37 was 38 last year, 37 the year before that, 40 the year before that. Super consistent. Wow. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, that is a crossover with Z, and that's Deception, Murder, in Hong Kong. Oh, that's very almost, close to where I put it, too. Same place. I better get buku points for this. I don't... Are we scoring? Yeah, see, oh, for Tom me, gave people. up on that a long time ago. Oh, I don't know. I'm not following this <laughs> game. Uh, Paul also did a super chat. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Paul says, bring back the scoring. Actually, Paul said <laughs> it up to you, so that's that. All right. What did he say? He just said you uh, seem like a nice person, but your taste in games was bad. Uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate the compliment. That's I'll take it. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. All right. All right. Thirty-six for me is this is the second year it's on the list, and it's really close to where Mike put it, actually. And this is my favorite of the West Kingdom trilogy: Paladins of the West Kingdoms. I think it's the best of the trilogy. I know that Mike does not. Spoilers. Um, but uh, this is definitely a point salad game. For sure, there's like no theme, but it takes the concept of having cards in your hand that you play that give you special ability with worker placement where the workers are slightly different. They're different colors. Um, and puts it together in a game that I still remember the first time I played this. It's a heavier game. I 
I'm sorry for those of you super heavy gamers out there. You don't think it's heavy. But for most people, it's a heavy game. And when it was done, I instantly wanted to play it again. And that does not happen very often. Um, I really like this one. Paladins of the West Kingdom. Nice. It's a heavy game. That one I have not played. I played mm-hmm. the other two. I haven't played that. I don't know if you'd like it, but then you did like Merv, so. <laughs> Everything's thrown out the window. Yeah. Merv has yeah. changed everything. Now, every, oh, there's yes. before Merv, there's before Merv, BM. Well, let's, let's take that back. And then after Merv, <laughs> AM. Everything's different. They're well, both no, no, BM no, to me. It's, uh, it's BMZ, uh, because it's before Merv Z, and then okay. AMZ. And then AMZ. Right. Is the name Z that channel where they uh, talk about gossip? Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Oh, it's TMZ. Never mind. Uh, TMI. My my thirty six will come yeah, as a surprise. All TMI. Let's go. <laughs> my thirty six will come as a surprise to no one as a space game, but this is one of the zaniest, silliest space games out there where you are building your own spaceship and trying to collect different things and make it to the end. This is Galaxy Trucker. I love Galaxy Trucker. <laughs> Galaxy Trucker is a blast to play. You're building a ship in real time and you're trying to make sure all the connections fit just right. That you need engines so your ship can go faster and get ahead of everybody else because that'll get you more money. You need places for cargo because you can get cargo off planets and that'll get you more money. But there's pirates so you need guns so you have to be able to protect yourself from pirates. You also need more crewmates because sometimes you might want to get another ship to get more money or sometimes some of them get killed off. So you need everything on your ship but you have to try to figure how to make it fit all together this is always an exciting game to play as you're doing all the different stuff and then asteroids are coming and blowing up your ship it's just interesting and exciting to see how everything plays out after you've built this crazy contraption i really enjoy galaxy trucker it's kind of hard for me to get to the table just because i feel like i've played it so much that i'm kind of like up here so a lot of times i'll just wait a little while before i start with people and then they can start and then we start building um, but okay, it so is a lot of fun Galaxy to play. Trucker and you're bragging? Uh, Listen, I'm just glad I'm not standing alone in Galaxy Trucker anymore. Secondly, Roy, would you say that you min-max your ship in Galaxy Trucker? Yeah. I tell would him, never Galaxy. say I min-max anything. <laughs> I've never said the words min and max together. I've been actually struggling not to say min-max this entire time. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you for I that. I was just asking. I love you, comments. I love min-maxing my ship, and I love I trying to min-max I read all the comments, everybody. Uh-huh. If you can and tell me it... people's kryptonite, I'll use it. Mm-hmm. And I would love to play Galaxy Trucker at cons with people if we ever have those again, but it's a it's a lot of fun game, and it's just super silly. <laughs> Roy, I'm a... come on. I think we'll have them again. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> Galaxy Trucker time, then. In the year 2085, <laughs> one man. <laughs> Galaxy right. Trucker has a surprisingly good app, too, actually. That's the last mm, time I played yeah, it yeah. was on the app. So. But you also like it, Mike Delicia? It's okay. It's definitely nowhere near my top 100. I, it's, you know what, Z? It's a game I appreciate probably more than I like. I think it's a gr- really interesting and different design, but I don't I'll take love it. the stress. I don't love the stress of the real-time Yeah, Mike is not a right. real-time player. Yeah, yeah. So my number 36. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a complicated history with the game Gloomhaven. Yes, it's a game that I wanted to like because I played it and I thought it was a really, really well done series of mechanisms. And then I also realized relatively quickly that it was a game that did not suit me in my gaming lifestyle. It was too big too long to set up and tear down. I wasn't going to play 80 hours of this game. So I had it twice and I got rid of it twice. And then came my number 36, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. This is uh, what I needed Gloomhaven Uh, to be. Don't give me that rock. Rock. This is what Gloomhaven, this is what I felt like Gloomhaven needed to be. It's a game that fits my lifestyle. (laughs) And it has those same mechanics, right? The ones that won't let me hit a rock. But it's a brilliant design, right? There was never any question in my mind that it was a brilliant design. The card system is really, really special. And now you've got the maps that are in that spiral bound book. And it's got a way to introduce people to, by the end of it, you're playing Gloomhaven. I mean, it's essentially the exact same game, just in a much more approachable package a smaller box, a more manageable 
uh, you know, campaign that you can play through. So uh, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion to me was a game changer because it allowed me to enjoy this game the way I knew I would if I could. So that's my number 36, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Not surprised. I really want to play through this whole thing. I got to play. All right. My number 36 is a fairly small game, but a puzzly one called Sentient, or Sentient, if you want to Whoa. say it that way. Huh. Uh, this one is a drafting slash worker placement-ish game in which you are uh, going to be taking cards from the table and playing them on your board. And as you play those cards on your board, they will affect some dice that are sitting there. And the cards are printed in the corner as to what they'll do to the die. It might have a plus symbol. And so when you play it, that die spins up one or maybe down or maybe no change. And then scoring requirements that are listed on the cards. So it's all about playing cards where they are going to affect a positive change so you can score. And being careful that you don't play a card that messes up what you're trying to do because every die... As a card affect it from both sides. It's just a lovely little puzzle game. Very simple. You're, you know, again, the scoring is a very straightforward set collection game. Uh, the the end game scoring, I should say, but you know, wanting like a bunch of pink cards multiplied by the pink tokens. Great. That's simple. But it's those puzzles that that the 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 meat of the game, the inside of the game, that is really fun and enjoyable i love games that at the beginning of every round or every turn every time i'm i'm up i'm presenting with i'm, I'm presented with a fairly little puzzle you know i don't want to have to break my head every single turn i have but just to look at, at the board at the display and go hmm okay yeah i like yeah i could do that 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 is so satisfying to me and this game gives me that and it does it in you know 35 40 minutes then it's done Love it. Lovely game. Sentient, my 36. All right, the two there. things. David yes. wants to say, hi, Mom, David Ors. And Gareth <laughs> says he has great taste in games. He could play almost his whole list in one night. And he appreciates that fact. That's right, baby. <laughs> I don't know what that's... Uh, anyhow. All right, like shorter people's, games. People's choice. So I am one of the things that surprised me about this list, and I'm pretty sure I'm correct here. I don't think Star Wars Outer Rim has made the list. And if Fantasy Flight would just put the Mandalorian in there and call it the child expansion, they'd sell a million copies. Anyhow, True. but what does played. make the list at 36 is Star Wars Rebellion. Star Wars Rebellion, it's been on the list for five years, stays pretty consistent. It was 30 last year and a year before that. Uh, just... If you want to, if you like Star Wars, this is probably the most thematic and covers the most ground. So, not a surprise to me. Star Wars Rebellion. Yeah, this is one I haven't played yet. I'm putting Outer Rim on my uh, Catch Up Palooza list. Yeah, I, mean, I, well, actually, I, I didn't play that either. Palooza too. I've, I've played Outer Rim and I found it okay. <gasps> well, wait, then does that make sense? Then, that, then let's Roy. move it up to the top of the list. We're playing. That Roy likes Pulsar, guys. This goes on the <laughs> list. Stays on the list. Okay. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to click. <laughs> what? And we're back. That's fantastic. All righty, we're back. All right. So I've been a little cult of the newish. Let's pick one that's been on the list since the very beginning. It started off as yes. my original seven, and it's been on the list every year. Although I haven't played it in a while, but I would like to. And I, I, I don't think Roy's played this one. I think you might enjoy it, Roy. And that's El Grande. The king and grandfather of area control games or area majority games. That cover makes and me it, want to play it. <laughs> yeah. The cover. I know. Bring it in. Uh, it's mean. It's, it's very much back and forth. And it has a unique card mechanism that, as far as I know, has not been replicated where you pick these cards that pick your turn order, but also give a, a special ability. And with the expansion, they even let you kind of draft which ones you want at the beginning, which I like a lot. I don't know Isn't if you kind of what TI4 does. Yeah. Doesn't TI4 kind of do that same thing where you, no, you you're all picking, turn order? No, but you're all picking from the same eight. Ah. And, and this one, you have a handful of cards, but they, but they have multiple things. They give you the number of armies that you can 
basically draft to put in your in your group of available armies to put on the board. They give you an ability. And also they let you pick from cards that are out there. The, the combination, it sounds a little complex. It's not. It's really simple back and forth. But it's, it's, I think it's a lot of fun. Z, did you ever play the expansion? I don't think so. I don't think I played the expansion. I played the base game with you. And I thought it was fine. Uh, it's been so long. I, I would need to replay this again to tell you I what I think of it now. But. All right, El Grande and Mr. Dreadful wants us to know that it's Spanish for the grand thing. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good to know. Right. That's right. Huh. Mm. <laughs> All right, my 35 is another dexterity game. I actually just played this with my kids, I think, last weekend. I played it at conventions. I've played it with my game group. I've had a blast playing this game. And this is Rhino Hero Super Battle. I love this game it is a silly blast building these crazy gigantic towers moving your little meeple slowly up the tower and if you land on the same level as somebody else you have to roll off and you can knock somebody down you hope that you're the highest when the tower falls but also when it's your turn you're super nervous trying to put these walls and towers up um i played games of this where these these towers just get huge and massive and uh, it's just always a blast playing this game this is just one of those games that are just silly fun and um it's a really fun game to play with a bunch of a wide variety of different people that is rhino hero super battle yeah but i want to know will penguins supplant rhinos no no i definitely love the mechanics of this way more than the uh the penguin game but there is also penguins in rhino hero you're a you're a penguin (laughs) you're a you're a penguin (laughs) we did it we did it on a live stream recently (laughs) it's and it's a stacking game like this one where you with folded cards no, no, yes. it's more like regular Rhino Hero, but it's right. also got, it's like even more well, Rhino Hero than regular cards. Rhino Hero is. This also has folded cards, yes. Okay, uh, Rhino Hero Super Battle is the one with the hanging monkeys, right? Yes. 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 The penguin does have hanging monkeys. Right there. Why are we this talking has, about yeah, this? Yeah, but this one has a fat penguin. Fat Look about how fat these penguins are. <laughs> Put them penguins on a treadmill. Give me some hero rhinos. I really enjoy a lot of this. The the combat thing and the fact that your character is actually like climbing the tower as well is another thing that I find enjoyable that is not in that penguin game. So Exactly. I'm sorry. <clears throat> well you the missed room. a chance yeah. to ask Mike about underrepresented animals in board games. So for but... my number thirty five, hey Roy, you know what animal is severely underrepresented in games? That's right, penguins. And my number thirty five has nothing to do with penguins. It's actually a I would consider it a party game. It's at least a two-way crossover. Might be three. I don't remember if it was on your list, Roy. That mm. is QE. This is a game that... Oh, um, yes. yes! Yes. Now, here's the thing. I, I, about I, penguins? I, I, I just said you it said has nothing that. to do with things. kidding. Oh. <laughs> I felt much like Z still feels right now. I was very, very hesitant to even try this game. I thought it was going to be a one-trick pony because I was <laughs> explained to the game... And you know what? To some extent, it is a one-trick pony, but that one trick is so good that I've played this probably 25 times, and I would still play it at a drop of a hat because it is such a neat... It's a just, <laughs> Come on, it's, see, it's don't a, steal my joke. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a real... Yeah, drop of a hat. It's a really, really good game where you basically are uh, you know, bidding for uh, tiles, or well, I don't know what you'd call them, but you're bidding for things that you're going to try to collect in sets, but the thing is, you can basically bid any number. Now, it sounds maybe like it's like, okay, that's not going to work. It's stupid. I'm telling you, it just creates a such a fun experience. And I've tried it. The thing is, I know that it's versatile because I've played it with so many different groups. I've mm-hmm. played it with groups of people that I know really well, and it's all about the meta. I've played it with groups of complete strangers, and it still works. I've played it in larger groups. I've played it in smaller groups. I think it it's a game. Groups, it blue groups. That's right. <laughs> I played it. Here, I played it, uh, <laughs> I played it before group, Merv. I played it after Merv. It works. It's a really, really <laughs> good game. You... <laughs> I doubt you've played it after Merv. I'm just going to call your bluff. <laughs> oh, jeez. We are going deep, deep down the inside joke rabbit hole. That's right. But at least it was an inside joke from earlier this video. Yeah, so, no. QE is a game that I think... You know, you got to try it at least once. It, it may not work for you, but you'll probably, I, I really think you'll you'll enjoy it. QE is uh, a really, a really good game. I, I'm, I'm happy to try it. I'm happy to, to yeah. give it a go. It just sounds obtuse. 
but I'm, oh, hey, everybody seems to be saying, hey, this works. Are you calling Mike obtuse? No, yeah, no, it's really game not. Game choices are terrible and truly outdated, uh, but the game, <laughs> I said, sounds obtuse. Right. It's fun. It's- where were we? Am I done insulting people? All right, well, yeah. Z's looking for his insult. First of all, Juan says he likes El Grande, and Z included it in a top ten of games that haven't been killed yet in the past. And Adge says thanks from Canada, and we helped them getting in the hobby Ooh. and out of poker. Wow. Okay. I've never heard yeah. that one before. That's cool. Yeah, I know. Well, thank you very much. All right, my number, number 35, 35 is poker. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, right? That would be... That would be... The most serendipitous <laughs> listing I w- I've ever done. Uh, um, 35 is actually Bruges, which I want to say is now and will be for the rest of this list. If it, that proves wrong, forgive me, but I think it is my highest Stefan Feld game. It's my yeah. favorite Feld. Yeah. Bruges is card driven, very much about the cards first. There is a board there. It is a point salad game in which you're making a few points here and there from all sorts of things. Build up the river at some points. Uh, build houses in front of you. Points. Put people in those houses at some points. Everything is points. But I love that there's this giant deck of cards with a bunch of different characters. And when you employ them, they will make your experience, your play, your abilities just a little bit different from everybody else. And that compounds. So once you've hired six, seven people, I, it just feels fantastic to have these neat abilities in front of me. And that's that's what puts Bruja, I think, above the other ones. It's tight. It's still well balanced and has that interest to it. But then it's it's got that injection of uh, personality. And maybe personality is not quite the right word, but um, <laughs> diversity maybe. You know, it, it lets me sort of uh, do my own thing. So Bruja. 35 really really enjoy this one i'm really i'm really interested to see how you will feel about the the new one you know how that will the new one's not set in bruges so there goes the personality (laughs) (laughs) it but i think it does add the uh expansion into it have you played with the expansion i never i never did by the time i kind of looked again it was super out of print right right Mm. right okay by the way i'm being told it's age not age sorry oh okay all right, people's choice. All right, I have some right, small apologies age? to Mike. Oh, super here. chat. Yes. No apologies. Okay. So last year, this game was at 57, and I was pretty sure it would fall off the list due to the overwhelming hype. But it is still on the list, so I guess it can't just be hype. Now, I'm not anti this game. I think it's a fine game. I just don't think it's as great as all everyone else says it is, including Mike. But obviously, the people agree with Mike. Tapestry. Tapestry. Boom. <laughs> and okay. it's going up, Tom. Not going, not going it down. It is going, going up. up. You're right. Maybe next year Pendulum will make the list. <laughs> Pendulum is not on my list, Tom. <laughs> um, so. uh, oh, Joseph also wants to tell us that Bruges is Belgian for the Bruges. Ah, oh, wow. I feel like I'm learning a lot today. We are learning a lot. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, back to what people oh. say. How People... long until we have a uh, Le Havre joke? Show up <laughs> by the way, time. by the way, though, am I honestly, Mike, did you think it would go up on people's? I did not. I mean, despite everything else, I did not think I thought it was kind of a not a flash in a pan, mm. but just the hype would fall a bit. My concern, I thought it might. I thought it might go up, but my thought, my concern was that there was a lot of negative chatter about it. it. It's, you know, I know I've used this word a lot, but it is a divisive game. However, I think it has more wide appeal than maybe you give it credit for. And it also got an expansion, so. It got a good expansion, yeah, I like because it just adds more stuff. Again, Mike, I like the game. <laughs> I know, saying... I know, I know you do. Oh, yeah, and uh, Lahav means it, the harbor, says Mr. Dreadful. All right, let's move on before we get some more of this stuff. (laughs) Okay, my number 34 has been on the list for two years, the second year, although, again, I played this game way back when I played El Grande, but recently it's just really hit a sweet spot for me. I even played it again a few times this year, and that's St. Petersburg. I don't know why this game just keeps growing on me. It's it's ah, it's just such a fun game. Now this the, is the reworked edition of this, right? 
Yes, that's true. It's oh man, though it's an ugly reworking. It's not a pretty. They. I that's mean, what they, my that's what my mom used to call me after my sister was born before me. Ugly. <laughs> 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 that's that's the, the bad reprint. Um. <laughs> No, but I like this game. I think it works with... I used to say it only worked well with two, but I've been playing with multiplayers, and maybe that new extra segment that they added in fixes my main problems with the game, the aristocrats being too powerful. Right. It is such a great game. If you've never played it, definitely check it out. I like it a lot. That's St. Petersburg. So my number 34 is another collectible card game. Some might even say the father of all collectible card games, and this is Magic the Gathering. And one of the main reasons this is so high for me is because I recently started playing it more in a new format called um, Popper. Um, and that is where you play the game with only common cards. <laughs> um, I played a ton of Magic the Gathering, like Friday Night Magic, tournaments and things like that. I did a lot of different games of this. I really enjoyed the game a lot, but one of the things that was really hard for me to do was to keep up with the price cost of this game um, and try to figure out how to do that. Um, when you play it at the common level in Popper, it's you can afford basically every card. No card is over 25 cents, and it's really easy to play. So I've been building a lot more decks recently. I had someone just give me a whole bunch of common cards. So I've been playing a lot of these decks with my kids. I mean, most people know what Magic the Gathering is, and it's crazy how long this game has been around and it still hasn't faded. There are still gigantic magic communities out there, and they're still coming out with set after set. Um, I just prefer to see the little little black symbol on there that means that the cards are only going to be like ten cents because I can't afford to buy crazy planeswalkers or crazy fetch lands that are eighty dollars. Um, but I do enjoy the gameplay itself. So Magic: The Gathering, my thirty-four. Yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, that's a lot of the games you like kind of feel like they were birthed from magic. So I can totally see that. Yeah. All right. My number 34 is the latest in my continuing series of games that only I seem to like. And that is Cinque Terre, The Five Villages. Uh, unfortunately, this game is out of print. And, and that that really is a shame because I think this is a great entry level, maybe slightly above entry level, pure pickup and deliver game. And it is just such a gorgeous game, a very simple board where you've got just basically these five villages that you're going to that each uh, have a particular vegetable that they are selling. And you've got dice that represent a variable market on how much people are willing to pay for that particular vegetable at any particular point in a round. And you're just simply going along with these lovely little wooden trucks and you're picking up these vegetables putting them on your little player board that represents your truck, and you're trying to buy them low and sell them high. Very simple concept. You're trying ah, that's also what I've been doing to, wrong. Right. You're also trying to uh, collect uh, these, these vegetables so that you can fulfill contracts. It's also basically a contract fulfillment game. But it is just such a streamlined experience, such a simple, uh, right at the... I've said before, I like games that take a central mechanic and pretty much stick to that. And that's what Cinque Terre does in a beautiful, colorful, gorgeous package. I wish it was still in print because it's too hard to get a hold of right now. But that's my number 34, Cinque Terre. I think this is a, a Chris Handy game, which it I'm is. surprised it he is. had. He probably has the rights back. I'm surprised he hasn't tried to kickstart He's it. He's still trying to figure out how to fit it in a yeah. in one of those small bubblegum boxes. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. right. Yeah, yeah. No, this was, yeah, a real Grande game. I, I don't know why it's out of print. Yeah. All right, stick it on the list. The <laughs> catch up. You haven't, you haven't played this played, one? I heard there were dice in it. Put it on the list. Roll. Cinque so. Terre. Cinque Terre. Put it on the list. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mother 34 <laughs> is a classic, an absolute classic of tile laying and uh, buying and collecting Alhambra or Alhambra. Uh, whatever, however you want to say it. This is a game I've had in my collection in one form or another for many, many years. And to this day, I just played this game, I kid you not, for, just for funsies, I think uh, three weeks ago or something like that. Uh, so, and it's just as fun. I mean, it's just as, because it's such a clean design. It's just straightforward concept this is my one recommendation whenever somebody is absolutely uh unfamiliar with, with 
what we call hobby board gaming. If I ask them, so what is your favorite game? And their answer is Monopoly, which it would be a lot of people's answers. You know, you can get you know Clue or Risk or whatever, but Monopoly. Mm-hmm. If they say Monopoly, I suggest they try Alhambra because it's very similar concepts. Make money, spend money to buy buildings. You're kind of doing that in Monopoly. Mm-hmm. And I just love the the spatial aspect that then this puts on that, this idea of fighting the other players for control of the different building types. Tons of expansions if you want to go down that rabbit hole, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's just uh, a blast to play. I really love it. Alhambra, my 34. All right. First of all, Chrissy says she's grateful for the Dice Tower because it helped her meet the Kirbys and get them in the king group. Hmm. Very nice. All right, People's Choice number 34, once again agreeing with Mike. This is a disgusting 10. Um, well, not really. This is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. This is a brand wow. new entry. I'm not surprised. Very popular. Oh, for sure. Yeah, um, it's a big debut. Yeah, so very, you know, it's accessible. I'm still amazed at how easily it is to, you know, that this game walks you into learning a complex yep. game from scratch does it fantastically so next year we're gonna we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna fit you know all the gloom havens and frost haven on the list but (laughs) we'll see so let's say let's ask right now is this going to be top 10 next year people's choice Ooh, that's interesting we'll move up i mean it debuted in the 30s right i mean that's true is it available at target yeah, I do but wonder. Is it still available because you know yes. Target will just cut something. They'll be like, oh, I think it's in game done. stores now too, though. So. It, yeah, it's still being okay. sold in Targets too. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if the fact that there's different sure, versions, yeah. people will only pick one for their list, so it might end up like splitting yeah. it up. So it could, because Frosthaven's going to be in the mix some sometime soon too. So that's true. All right. All right. So 34 Gloomhaven, <laughs> Jaws of the Line. Excuse me. Whoa! <laughs> it's too early for that. <laughs> <laughs> we broke Z. We broke Z. <laughs> oh no! Sorry, me... <laughs> Someone mark that down for the blooper reel. All right. Oh <laughs> no! Come on! All right. Oh, can someone say supercut? I just did. All right. <laughs> so I've been talking about older games a lot on this one, but I've also talked about newer ones. I can't look at Z. <laughs> uh, my number thirty. <laughs> My number 33 is Hiccup Mountain. No, Whistle <laughs> Whistle Mountain. This Whoa. Is, yes, I am a huge worker placement fan, and this one is a huge new release for me from 2020. I love it. I was not expecting to. Again, this game had the same feeling that I mentioned earlier with Paladins, where I played it, and I instantly wanted to play it again, and I was browbeating Mike. I was like, Mike, you got to play this. You got to play yeah. this. Um, it's notice I didn't do that to you, Z. Um, but uh, yeah, I lots of fun. Play it and play it and play it. You said no, because I didn't think you like it. But that was um, BM. Uh, Did I so... that with you? <laughs> <laughs> I really want to keep this. Everything. This was BM. Yes, definitely. So, so <laughs> AM, you may like. You're right. Whistle Mountain. I love it. So anyhow, whistle. <laughs> Can we, <laughs> we have to pick a different acronym. I'm sorry. DM. No, terrible. I think it fits I think perfectly. It's perfect acronym. I think it's a perfect acronym. You know, Tom, <laughs> it's 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 interesting because you you did you actually told me that I need to play this, and I've only played it the once, but I really liked it. I have a feeling if I play it some more, this could actually get onto my top 100. It is a mm. rock solid game. I really think it should just not have been called Whistle Mountain. It has nothing to that, do. with will stop. That's the that's my biggest beef with the game is that it has, it really doesn't. And I think it's doing it a disservice because yeah. I didn't love whistle stop. And so I wasn't interested at all in whistle mountain. Uh, yeah. So. All right. Let's, let's, let's keep let's moving. Move on. 33 for me is a 
very quick playing space game, and that is Race for the Galaxy. I really enjoy the hand management of this game and trying to figure out how to build out your tableau with all the different combos. Some might even say you have to min-max in this game, but yeah, <laughs> I enjoy- Yeah, say it! <laughs> I enjoy like trying to get in your opponent's head to think about which card and which action they're gonna play. So it's like, okay, if they're gonna play that, then I don't need to play it. And which one do I really need the bonus on? Maybe I need to refill my planets. Maybe I need to use them to score points. Maybe I need to dig for the perfect card that would make this combo work just great. And this game is great at like different player counts just because it's so fast with very little downtime based on the way the card play works. You're always doing something in this game. It's very enjoyable. I'm pretty sure we might see it higher on someone else's list, um, but Number 33 is Race for the Galaxy for me. Good choice. All right. My Boom. number 33 is a game that just got re-released in a new version, and the four of us played it and did a review of it. I actually prefer the original version, although the new one is beautiful. That is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. This is a game wow. that, uh, yeah, is I've the always liked the this new game. one, or or do you not differentiate between them? No, I I'm actually putting the the original version on my on my list. Yeah, uh, wow. and like I, like I said, I still like, yeah, I like the new one. This this actually was number twenty eight on my top forty last year, so it's it's gone down a little bit, and part of that might be for playing the new one, but not probably not. I I really do like this game, but honestly, my one of some of my favorite parts of the game. <laughs> I feel like we're de-emphasized in the new version, and that's why I think I like. I like that the half the deck is, uh, you know, face up and half is face down. That right. seems like such a silly thing, but to me, that is just a brilliant, brilliant mechanic for a market because it gives you some information, but some you don't want. And if you see, you know, one really good card that you can see face up, but there's two face down, you might have some corruption in there. You don't know if you want that corruption. It's a game that is super easy to teach and learn. It has a lot of variability in the sense that really what you're doing is set collecting and, and spending those sets to do different things, whether it's to build a monolith or, or a what do they call those? Obelisk? Whatever they call Obelisk, thank you, Roy. <laughs> or to do, get, get some polyomino pieces that you're going to place up in the, in the garden there. It's just a the original production from Days of Wonder... I already thought was over the top gorgeous. The new one is, you know, ridiculously nice, but they're both beautiful, a fantastic game, a, a I would say a, a, a probably a family weight game, wouldn't you guys say? I don't know if it's much fun family weight. Basically, I mean, yeah. You can't play with that, kids that are yeah. too young, but it's kind of yeah, a family. Slight, it's slightly over, young. you know, a days of wonder game. So there you have it. Right. Cleopatra and Society of Architects. That's good stuff. My 33 is uh, a game that, while the edition that's on my list isn't the original published one, it has been around since 2000, and that is Citadels. Uh, now, I think the best edition of this is the one that came out, I, I want to say, 2016. And it's sort of the, 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 the master set of it. It includes all the original char characters and cards. It includes the... Dark City expansion characters and cards, and then a bunch of new stuff on top of that. It's a beautiful production, large format cards for the characters that the players are going to be drafting, and then all new artwork as well. And you're building a city in front of you, scoring points for a few different things. Yes, the game can be mean. You can certainly mess with each other. It's uh, kooky in many ways. It's wild. But it's also a, an absolute blast to play. I've liked this game for a long time. This edition just solidifies it on my list. Uh, and therefore, it ends up in, uh, you know, I, I believe 34 is one third. But, you know, 33 <laughs> is close also. 33 <laughs> Citadels. All righty. We have a three-way crossover here in the 30s between me, Mike, and the people with Paladins of the West Kingdom debuting. Yeah. This is the... Second highest debut this year. Wow. Uh, for the people. Uh, and, well, usually games debut, then move up. That's just how it works. This sure. is pretty high. Uh, the, the West Kingdom trilogy is very popular, as is pretty much everything that he prints at this point. You know, I fully expect, I don't think Viscounts made the list yet, but if you remember, 
It was on the Brand People's new. Choice for Best of 2010. I mean, 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2010 would be weird. Um, but I would, I'll say Viscounts is on the list next year. You know, just Guaranteed. because. Guaranteed. Did Viscounts come out in 2020? Yes. Yes. So two of them came out in 2020. No, no Paladins, is Paladins came out in 2019, but like I said, it takes a while for it to get out in the distribution and everything. Right. So uh, I thought Paladins was the last one. Viscounts is the last one. Viscounts, Viscounts is the last one. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, Paladins of the West Kingdom, your number 33. My number 32 actually would probably be higher if I rated it. On my last play of it, because this game, every time I play it, I like it more, despite the fact that not all four of us are as thrilled about the game, to the point where someone ranking it a seven, we look unkindly on that. Like, how can you not love this game? I love Nidavellir. It is such an amazing game. I could play it over and over and over and over again. Um, Like I said, each time I play it, it goes higher for me. It is my go-to... You got five people, pull this game out. It's going to take not too long to play. Fairly easy to teach. Every game I play, I can pick different leaders to stick in my group, you know, try a different strategy. Ah, I, I really, really like this game. Yeah. So Yeah, it was my 78. It's going to go up, Tom. There's no question. It's going to go up. I, I, I'm with you. I like it more every time I play it. Yeah. So... And again, I'm 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 just joshing on, on Z, you know, because Z yeah. Z said it's a seven, and we're like, what? How could be seven? For me, at my thirties are pretty close to tens at this point, you know. So, it's it's definitely up there. Nidavellir. Good, really wow. good. Wow. Okay. Thirty-two for me is a game that basically started off the whole Kickstarter thing. It is set in space and is a dice placement game called Alien Frontiers. Space. I this really, space. really space. enjoy <laughs> <laughs> Alien Frontiers. You're rolling your dice, which are your ships, going to different outposts and things like that to collect different resources and then trying to build more ships so they're your different workers that you can place around the board. You're trying to colonize this planet that has all these different cool like sci-fi writers' names on them and they're all kind of like very sci-fi themed with all of this stuff. And you're trying to race up a point track um, and be the last person to put your last little colony thing on the board to end the game in the highest position. Um, unlocking special abilities all along the way. I really enjoy Alien Frontiers, and I really enjoyed it for a really long time. It's a blast to play. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it as much these days, but it's one that whenever we have Dice Tower conventions, I'll still pull out and teach it to people and be like, have you played Alien Frontiers yet? And every single time, the people have a blast playing it. So my 32, Alien Frontiers. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Alien Frontiers is a game that I, I think is fine. I've probably cooled on it over the years. But you think about, this was one of the the, the first big Kickstarters. Mm-hmm. It was one of the games Garbage that really... Garbage compared to Kickstarters now, though. Well, I know, right? right? At, the time, it, at the time, it was considered a huge success. It was one of the, the earlier games that used dice as workers for worker yes. placement. So I think that, you know, Alien Frontiers is pretty, you know, important in, in a lot of ways. So. I agree. All right. Uh, my big issue, my big issue with it right now is just there's a lot of addition, addition confusion when it comes to Alien Frontiers. You know, they had oh, first edition, second are? edition, third edition with expansions, third edition with rocket dice and expansions, then fourth without some of these. I don't know what's what anymore. I just like the yeah. base game, so. I know, but I'm saying the base game has changed quite a bit since it I came out. I want to say out. there's at least six editions of it now. Yeah, I point. just wish that they would come out with something, put everything in there, or or even do like an essential, like like Viticulture did. Do, you know, do essential edition. Call it a day. Sell something that people can look at and go, this is I what it. I need to buy. I disagree. Mm. Just buy a copy of it. I don't want another edition, Z. Come on, you just said there's too many editions and now you want another one. <laughs> I said there's edition confusion. Probably because you haven't looked into it. You know what, Roy? Want... Don't talk to me. Take me <laughs> to your space. I just want Alien Frontiers, the dice game. All right, my Aaron, number 32. Isn't it? That's the joke! My number 32 is... Um... <laughs> Could you spell it out clearer for me, Mike? <laughs> there are dice in the game. I'm confused. 
This 10, this list of 10 has been very, we've spent a lot of time in the West Kingdom, but you know what? We're not done yet. This is a game that I feel like ultimately, as, as I play it more, will probably end up being my favorite in the series. This is Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Yes, it's very new. I really, really, really like this game. Uh, and what's interesting is, is that the central mechanic of Viscounts is deck building, which is not my favorite mechanic, but it's deck building in the way that I like, which is that it's just an element of the game. It's not necessarily the whole game. It uses a lot of different things. It's got clever card play. It's got moving around a kind of a circular board. It's got drafting, uh, buying workers that are going to allow you to do uh, special things. It's got some set collection in there. It does what a lot of the designer Shem Phillips uh, games do, which is take a lot of little elements and put them all together in a really well-integrated whole. It's a game that does a lot of things but doesn't feel overwhelming. It's not too difficult to pick up. I mean, there's a lot going on, but I think it's easier to learn than Paladin, certainly. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to be the one that I'll probably end up coming back to more and more and more. That's my number 32, the game that will definitely be on the People's Choice next year, Viscounts of the West Kingdom. I like. Are all Adam's three of better. these on your list, Mike, or just the top two, the last two, I should say? So far. I, I haven't played any of these games. It's because Mike hoards night. them all. He doesn't let anybody else play them. I know. I, know. I like Viscounts, but not nearly as much as Mike. Uh, yeah. yeah that's, you, need to, that's... you need to give it another shot, Tom. You don't. Pass. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take another. Never mind. Tom, have you played? Have you? But have you played Viscount since you played Merv? <laughs> <laughs> Play it again. I am not. The whole new world. This down. Whole new world. But having liked that game, I cannot live that down. Well, you my 32 is set in the West Kingdom's universe. <laughs> Retroactively, anyway, it's Saint Malo. <laughs> They would sell more copies if they said, like, St. Malo of the West Kingdom. Uh, yeah. This is a roll and write, really, before roll and write was kind of a big catchphrase. This one has a dry erase board. Everybody has a dry erase board. You're going to roll dice. You're going to then uh, Yahtzee-style roll, re-roll. Keep some of those. And then dry erase, pencil something in there. You are building up your walls for defense. You are collecting different characters. You are building churches, building housing, uh, putting things in your store uh, storage facilities, trying to make victory points, basically, and building up the walls, like I said, for defense from these pirates that attack you. It's, uh, it's from the uh, brand, so uh, Inca and Marcus brand, and I think they are fantastic designers. We talked about this earlier in the top 100. And this, in my opinion is one of their best games, also, unfortunately, one of their more uh, overlooked games. The yes. only bad thing I can say about this one is, in regards to roll and rights in general, this is much slower than those games because, because it's not simultaneous. You yeah. do take a turn, and then the next player will take a turn. So I mm -hmm. recommend it with fewer. And then, you know, most roll and write games now do simultaneous something. You right. One person rolls dice, but everybody uses them. That sort of thing. But forget that noise. This game is fantastic. I love Saint Malo. Thirty-two. If you haven't tried it, stop messing around with this West Kingdom's goofiness. Try some Saint no, no, Malo. No. You can have both. And I was about to say something nice too, Z. Recently, I just hold it in. Recent, recently, I played Era Medieval Age with uh, Z and Tom, and it was fine. But at the end of it, I thought, you know what? I think I would rather just play St. Malo. I don't just remember to, just playing to... that game with oh, you. Oh, so. okay. To be fair, Z, we, we know you don't remember games very often. But Mike did not play this with you. Yeah, no, okay. I, I played it with, with Z and... and, and, and uh, no, Z. I said Z again. Roy and Tom. Yeah, no, I... Uh, <laughs> They're very similar, I, and I could get why I you mixed like them up. I feel like they are. And then you like guys wonder why I like Merv, because Merv remembers me. <laughs> 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 All right. People's Choice, number 30, 32, second time on the list. It was 39 and then 145 before that, but it's going to be on the list for many years because the people who like this game love it, and that's Brass Birmingham. Uh, for a while at the game store, remember when we used to go there, 
I saw this game played almost every week. Just yep. consistent play, 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 play. People loved it. Um, it's interesting because Brass Lancaster came out. You know, they redid that one, but no one touches that one compared to Birmingham. And I know every time I say that, some people in the comments say, yeah, but Lancaster, Lancaster wasn't even in our top 500, probably for people's choice. Mm-hmm. Birmingham is where it's at. So, uh, also, that's I, every time we talk about Birmingham, I'm, I get sad there too because then I think about UK Games Expo. Oh. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, number 32 for people, Brass Birmingham. All right, my number 31, fifth year on the list. I love this game because I liked deck building a lot, but I I was really happy to see it kind of move into a new direction with bag building, or whatever it's called, pool building, and that's Orleans. Uh, Orleans, which is you definitely... Can't, you can't, Tom, I got to point out, you cannot do the or orly part, but then also pronounce the S. Pick one or the other. It's either Orleans or Orleans. Or Leon. There you go. Otherwise, you're driving my my brain is going bananas. I'm like, right. do I like Merv? Do I not like Merv? <laughs> I can't deal with it. Well, the reason I like Orleans is because the. <laughs> <laughs> you let me finish or what? You did it right away. I love it. Go ahead. Now I got to start over again. The reason I like Orleans is <sighs> because I like the bag belly part a lot. But I like the fact that the strategy seems to diversify from turn one. Like, there's no, hey, on your first turn, this is the thing you should buy. This is the the worker placement you should move. And also, moving around on that board, which I thought looked dreadfully dull, and, and, and I can never really remember what I did necessarily at the end of the game, but it's still very fun. This game, I'm just constantly building up. I like it a lot. Altiplano was fun, the sequel to it, but Orleon... A much more fun game. So that's my number 31. I think I played this one uh, at PAX Unplugged, I want to say. But it was like a co-op way to play. Is that right? Yeah, you can mm. play with the with the expansion. You can play yeah. co-op. Yeah, that was cool. I, I, I mm-hmm. liked this one. I, I would, I should try this again and, and sort of explore it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see if I like the traditional game. The well. co-op feels very much like the traditional. It's one of those games where I don't think it feels that different. So if you like the co-op, I bet you would like the traditional. Okay. So my 31, I really enjoy games that are very engine buildy, and it is Gizmos. This game is extremely simple as far as building up your little engine. Um, there's very simple actions you can do at the beginning, but this game is all about like multiplying those actions and being able to combo them together. So do you want to just pick one thing this turn or do you want to build a card but you could get a thing where when you build this color card you get to pick and then if you pick that color then you get to grab one out of the top and if you do all these things and they start comboing all together so you just have these crazy explosive turns and you're trying to build out your tableau of all these different machines to build the craziest zaniest machine in the game and it's got these really cool little marbles you're drafting the entire time um i just really enjoy gizmos it's an extremely quick playing game but it's just very satisfying once you get this giant engine built up when it's like you take one action, but it's really like taking 10, you know, as you're comboing it all together. Um, I've had a blast playing Gizmos. I played it with a lot of different people, and at several different conventions, I definitely bring Gizmos out a lot to show to other people, and it's very enjoyable. That's why it's my 31. Good Mm. choice. Nice. The marbles don't hurt either. Mm. All right. My number 31, the first time that I became acquainted with this game was at Gen Con many years ago. I knew nothing about it. I was walking past, and I was so struck by these gigantic miniatures. I'm like, oh, this looks cool. Let me go. And and I assumed that it was just a display copy for the convention. I, I wanted to see what the actual game looked like. And then I realized, this is the actual game. My number 31 is Cthulhu Wars. And the first time I thought I saw it, I thought it was a joke. I really did. I thought... This is ridiculous. This is the actual game, but then I played it, and it's a really, really good game that holds up to repeated plays. It's a basically an area control tentacles on a map game where you play <laughs> one of these <laughs> uh, one of these Lovecraft uh, inspired factions, and they all play slightly differently. And yes, there's a m- bunch of dice, and basically in the combat you're rolling handfuls of dice. But what I really like 
about Cthulhu Wars is that it's much more smart than it presents itself. It's not just rolling dice at each other and seeing who wins. There's, uh, you know, th th these asymmetrical powers and you all have spell books that you're trying to unlock. And what's really cool about that is that it kind of gives you as a player a direction. But you can unlock those spell books in any order you want. So it's not scripted at all, but you have things to work for on every turn. So you're like, I don't know what to do, but you know what? This spell book says control this gate for a turn and you can get, okay, I'm going to try to do that. And I think that's yeah. a really smart way to ease people into asymmetrical games. So even if you know the system and you've never played this faction before, you look at those spell books, you've got six spell books and you've got some direction. Super smart. And something I think that asymmetrical games would be uh, good to borrow from. So uh, Cthulhu War is the game that I've continued to play over the years. I continue to enjoy and uh, they keep releasing new factions. So uh, I'm excited to keep playing my number 31, Cthulhu Wars. You also, if, I'm, if I'm looking at my, my notes here, you also believe everyone should own it. It is essential. I got so much <laughs> grief about that. I, I wanted one showpiece game. I thought if everyone should have one showpiece game, this is what I chose. For I'm that. just saying, if you learn anything from your time on the Dice Tower, is if you ever get grief over something, we will do our best to help you through it by never letting you forget. <laughs> Correct. Very to be fair, this game, I played this game B.O. I played it before Orleans, so... Or Orleans. <laughs> is that a thing? This is getting oh, it, weird, fellas. It's a thing. It's getting strange. It's I gotta thing. tell you, I'm, I don't know how I feel about this, uh, this chunk of top ten. I'm confused. Oh. Mildly disturbed, <laughs> you could say. My 31 is a game called Everdell. Very cute game Ooh. with some... Uh, some worker placement, collecting resources like little berries and maybe little uh, crystals. I forget what they're called. Nectar, maybe I Amber? forget. Resin. Amber. Resin. That's the one. Amber. Isn't and it? then I, maybe know, it's resin, uh, but looks like Amber resin is. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. And little pebbles. And uh, it's just I love the little bits. And then so you're doing some worker placement with your cute critters, but also building up uh, what we in the industry call your tableau in front of you. By playing out cards and they give you little powers and actions. It's lovely. It looks it, it looks lighter and sort of goofier and sillier than it is. It's actually a decent amount going on. Uh, it's a tricky game to do well in, but it's not one that is uh, standoffish in any way. It's very welcoming. It's cute. Uh, I really enjoy it. I, I would be hesitant to recommend it to just about anybody because I think, again, they might be tempted to look at it and go, ooh, I'm going to play this with little Timmy. Little Timmy's not going to be able to handle this game. I know little Timmy's not that smart. But uh, perhaps when little Timmy's a little bit older, then you can you can play with little Timmy. <laughs> Stop being mean to little Timmy. You know what? I, I, I don't have to. Everdell, oh. 31. I like it quite a bit. Good choice. I like it too. It's been uh, on somebody's list. It was on mine. Right? It's on Roy's right. list. Last yeah. Last game of today, um, People's Choice, and sadly, we've now reached a point where Uwe Rosenberg is no longer has a game in the top 30. This wow. is the final one, and that is Feast for Odin. Oh. Or actually, it's called uh, a, feast a Feast for Odin. Odin, right. Anyhow, yes, and this is surprising because I think it's clearly the heaviest of all these games. There's a lot going on in the game. It's a tough teach. Um, but, you know, again, many people enjoy it. I believe Mike had it on his list. I did indeed. Already. And so, yeah, there you go. 31, A Feast for Odin. Yeah, and I, I figured before this was going to be... Go uh -huh. ahead, Z, sorry. I said I just figured this was going to be the top one. I knew, like, Agricola, Caverna, but then at some point, Feast for Odin took over for Caverna, which I thought was, mm -hmm. you know, very good. A, a nice improvement on Agricola. But I haven't tried this one. Yeah, they passed mark me down. Here. Where is uh, Feast for uh, Caverna was 27 last year. And so they passed each other this time. They passed in the night. It was, it was Feast for Odin was second, then Caverna. Mark me down for 115 points because I was correct that there would be two more Uwe games after Agricola. We'll give there you that in our, in our game, yes. Split Screen Gamer says don't play Everdell if you're hungry. All right. I, I yeah. shan't. 
Uh, thank you everybody for watching. So uh, two things. One, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, get more people to know about it. We'll be back later on today at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time with 30 through 21. Whew, the games just get better wow. and better. I Secondly, think that counts as the top third. <gasps> Secondly, <laughs> I'm learning all kinds of maths today. Um, <laughs> we are running the Dice Tower Kickstarter. There's only 60 hours left, but I just want to say thank you. Huge milestone for us. We just passed 7,000 backers. That's a big wow. deal for me. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank We're glad you. that people enjoy wow. our show that much, and you can be one too if you want. So, anyhow, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Canning. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm have, Z Garcia. <laughs> have fun interrupting <laughs> Z. <laughs>